Welcome, everybody. We're, let me add uh, my pleasure that you're all here uh, for worship of our Lord. Um, we're delighted that you're here. We're delighted that you're watch those of you who are watching online. Um, it is a privilege to have all of you here. I'd like to start by sharing our uh, opening principle, our verse, our opening principle, and then I'll lead us in prayer and uh, we'll jump right into our first song. So <clears throat> our portable practice that we're working on um, this month is the principle of compassion. And our scripture for this evening is as follows. And do not sorrow, bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. Let's go to God in prayer to open our time together. Dear Father in heaven, we pray that during our time together, you will send your Holy Spirit here to be with us, that we would be sensitive to his presence and attentive to what he would have us learn about you. Bless and empower all who lead this time of worship and those who are here present and those watching online. May everything we do glorify your name and bring the honor you so richly deserve. We ask this in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Tim will now lead us in our opening song. Thanks, Jim. Welcome, everyone, to Recovering Love Church. Glad you're here today. Why don't we stand for this uh, opening Amen. song, How He Loves. Jealous for me, loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. And all of a sudden, I'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me Oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so Is jealous for me, loves like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. When all of a sudden I'm unaware of these afflictions eclipsed by glory. And I realize just how beautiful you are Now great your affections are for me And oh, how he loves us so Oh, how he loves us How he loves us so Oh, 
portion and he is our prize drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes if his grace is an ocean we're all sinking and heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss and my heart turns violently inside of my chest I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way that he loves us oh how he loves us oh how he loves us oh Right. Thank you, Tim and crew. Uh, welcome, everybody. I was getting a little nervous here as we were first about to start off, and I saw three people, then six and eight, and then classic church on a Sunday on a beautiful day. They come rolling in hot about five minutes into the service, and, uh, and that used to be me, but first and foremost, I'm super glad you're here tonight. And for those who are, are, are viewing us online on Facebook Live, I'd like to uh, offer a special welcome to you as well. I'm not Jim Altoff, but I take that as a compliment that I see his name up there because Jim is somebody that I really look up to from a spiritual mentor standpoint. Uh, he's passionate. He's compassionate. He feels. He has great empathy. Uh, in some ways, I, I wish I had more of that. I'm not judging myself that I do or don't have enough. It's just as I have come to Recovering Love Church, and I spend time with, with members in working Bible study and tech team. As I get to know you people more, uh, the more compassion I have because I see it in others. And that's like, like AA meetings, right? I learn what I need to do and what's possible through the stories of others, through their experience. Because I come into this program and I have very little hope, very little hope for myself. Um, I'm addicted. I can't not drink and I can't drink. I had this dilemma, uh, and I have very little compassion for myself, right? There's this hatred, there's this self-pity, shame, guilt. Add up all those negative, negative adjectives, and, and, and I keep feeding that to myself on a daily basis. And so it's hard for me to break out of this, this bondage that I'm in. And, and once I can start to you know, give it up, I don't know, God, if, if you're going to take it away from me, I, I hope you do. I believe you can help others. I believe miracles are available, but... Um, not me. I'm too far down the road. I, I just I've lied too many times. I've stolen. I've, I've cheated. And I've promised you every morning I'm going to stop drinking if you just help me stop throwing up. And then come 2, 3 o'clock, I'd be back out there again and again, day after day after day. So I come into these rooms. I hear you tell your stories. And there's a part of me, quite frankly, early on that thought that you're making this up. You're probably drinking on the side and you're telling the story in the meetings, because nobody can have a change like that. Nobody can feel this good um, if you're like me, if you feel the way I feel. And um, over time, that's what they say, keep coming back, right? Keep coming back. It works if you work it. For a while, I'm like, blah, blah, blah. Like, like Jim was saying earlier, we were practicing through the service, and we are speaking, and he's like, blah, 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 blah. Does, does that sound good? And I'm like, yeah, it sounds good, right? Because <laughs> that's me. Blah, blah, oh, sure, you know, whatever you'd like. Um, you know, but, but those, when I start to have an open mind, uh, start to have hope um, and see it, see the miracles in the room, see the miracles that are here tonight. You know, I, I know a lot of you very, very well. I've, I've heard your stories. I've been out there with some of you out in the, the world letting it rip. And uh, thank God you're here. Thank God we're all here. And I pray for the others that are still out there. Um, compassion, forgiveness, step eight. We had a Bible study on compassion this last week. Jim McAleese and I uh, co-chair a Bible study, and, and you know, about half of you are in the room tonight. I encourage others who aren't in Bible study to, to take a look at it, to, to go to the, the front desk after the meeting and maybe get, give them your email address and, and see what we can uh, get you connected because it's, uh, 
just life-changing for me. To see the Holy, to see and feel, feeling's more important, to feel the Holy Spirit work through the members of the Bible study. It's, it's like nothing else, right, Melissa? Right. Uh, and John and Tammy and, and others. Um, um, in the portable practices, um, it talks about praying with your hand over your heart. You know, my sponsor and I were talking earlier this week about getting from the head to the heart, right? How do I move from the head to my heart? Because in my head, I, it's hard for me to feel compassion because I, I work through these things in my mind and judgment comes in, right? Well, you this and you that. And if you wouldn't have done this, then I certainly would have not have done that or felt this way or have this feeling. But that's all in my head because I'm, I feel wronged. I feel betrayed, cheated, uh, not ever looking at my part in it or what might be going on with you, right? You could have just gotten news that a, a family member has, has cancer or that uh, a child is, is addicted and needs to go to treatment. I don't know what's going on with others. So if I can start to go from my head to my heart, maybe I can lead with compassion and not judgment. Maybe. Um, but it's a start, right? Some of these simple things that I need to do are, are making these connections, these, these visuals, head to heart. And then you know, putting my other hand over my other hand to, to feel what that, what that feels like. Uh, and sometimes focusing on things like this really, really help me stay connected. Um, so I could go on, but I just want to leave it at that because that's really what's most important um, in my mind right now. And uh, have a great service. I'm actually not going anywhere because I'm doing the paired reading as well. So I'm going to invite my friend Tony up to join me. All right, the paired reading uh, for tonight is from Ephesians 30 through 32, and as Bill sees it, page 107. And do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you'll be saved on the day of redemption. Learning how to live in the greatest peace, partnership, and brotherhood with all men and women of whatever description is a moving and fascinating adventure. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. But every AA has found that he can make little headway in this new adventure of living until he first backtracks and really makes an accurate and unsparing survey of the human wreckage he has left in his wake. The readiness to take the full consequences of our past acts and to take responsibility for the well-being of others at the same time. Instead, be kind to each other, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. If we are about to ask forgiveness for ourselves, why shouldn't we start out by forgiving them, one and all? Thanks, Scott and Tony. Why, why don't we stand for this one, too? Precious 
did that grace appear the hour I first believed my chains are gone I've been set free my God my Savior has ransomed me and like a flood his mercy reigns unending love amazing The Lord has promised good to me, His word my hope secures, His shield and portion be as long as life endures. My chains are gone, I've been set free. My God, my Savior has ransomed me. And like a flood, His mercy reigns. Unending love, amazing grace. The earth shall soon dissolve like snow, the sun forbear to shine. But God, who called me here below, will be forever mine. Will be forever. Man, you are forever mine. Thank you, Tim, and a very special thanks to Scott Harold. Folks, I, I told him two minutes before this service started that he was going to do that five minute talk. Uh, and when that. Wasn't that just marvelous? And thank you, Tony, for sharing with us as well. Now, for the rest of you, I got a different message, okay? I don't understand what's wrong with you people. Why don't you just get off your, up off your doves and get your stuff together? I never ask anyone for anything. I've always taken control, seized opportunities, and made something of myself. I've worked hard took responsibility for my actions, and overcame adversity when it was necessary. So stop whining about how victimized you are. I'm tired of hearing how unfair life has been and how all you need is a handout or a hand up. Take charge of your life and make something out of yourself. Wow. What a way to start a message on compassion, huh? But what I want you to all understand is what you just heard is the real Jim Backley's. And there ain't much compassion in that, is there? I, we recently, Jill and I recently took one of these pop psychology tests that asks you a bunch of questions and then fits you into a block. And it gives results that look like this. Now, I hope you guys over there can see that. But it divides you into four quadrants along introvert, extrovert, feeling uh, versus uh, knowing or, or thinking, excuse me, thinking versus feeling, which most of y'all know is our two dimensions of the Myers-Briggs test. So this is not even as good as that. Um, but it kind of sorts you into one of these four quadrants I, and I know you all haven't taken that test, but look at the characteristics of those, okay? The people that draw their energy kind of in those quadrants. And what I'd like to do with just, you know, just a, a quick look of some of those characteristics up there. Let me start with y'all. How many of you guys are really, are really yellow 
and um, driven by fun and energy. Stand up. Let me. I, I want to see you yell because you're you're the you're the guys we want to hang around with, man. Yeah. 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 How how many of you all identify more closely with a red energy? You know, the try get things done. Eh. Okay, <laughs> there she is, folks, <laughs> and she is. Uh, how many of you identify with that blue kind of personality, the thinker? Hey, I, I recognize some of you guys there too. And finally then, how many of you identify with that green energy, the, uh, that block down? Yeah, that is for sure. Well, this probably won't come as a surprise to any of you all, but guess where I identify strongly? Blue. I am as I am a uh, intellectual ex introvert. Excuse me, intellectual introvert, and that's been confirmed in a lot of other personality tests um, that I've done. It's also interesting to me that because this thing gives you a measure on each of those dimensions, my second dimension is the red up there. And what I find is that as I'm under pressure, I tend to drift into that red category as opposed to my blue category. My smallest category up there is yellow, okay? Now, let me ask you who, what do you think the woman that I'm married to is <laughs> high as I? That's Miss Fun and Encouraging over there, and that's who she is by nature. I, I, would, I would like to point out, though, too, that her second strongest area up there is red. And so when we have arguments and both drift into that red category, what do you think that looks like? Oh, that, that is not fun. So I think you can all imagine the challenge it's been to live together as husband and wife for 56 years, okay, with such different, with such different basic personalities. And then when we have conflict, we move into the least compassionate room uh, up there. Okay, that, the, the point of all of that is, when I look at that, guess what my short, well, my next shortest is, is that green area, okay? And that's the area that I really, really want to focus on tonight. Um, because these are the people that are calm, caring, kind, concerned, and I might add, compassionate. And I'm gonna put in a plug, because he identified himself, that's Brad Herman, <laughs> you know, that's our pastor, Brad. Um, I, I, I applaud you people that have that as your primary characteristic, but I want you to know one thing. I got a bone to pick with you, and I don't want to go far past this without saying it. Uh, the, the green people tend to be tolerant of the faults of others, not wanting to make other people feel bad about themselves, okay? They tend to avoid confronting people's bad behavior and seem to overlook their transgressions. It's like, well, I know you have a drinking problem, but we love you anyway, uh, right? Instead of me, I said, yeah, drinking is unacceptable. Get into an AA program and clean up your act, okay? Which is how I do it. Our pastor at Grace Church, our other church, recently gave a sermon on this topic talking about the uh, tension between this idea of compassion and truth, okay? He pointed out that the church today has been afraid of being called intolerant and hateful, and that we have failed, therefore, to confront the evils of our culture. On issues like abortion and gender dysphoria, we have failed to present biblical truth for fear of being called bigoted, and hateful. 
We've experienced this divergence in our own family. Our adult, uh, getting to be adult grandkids, we're watching them drift away from the church because they don't, they have uh, bought into society's um, ideas of acceptance, tolerance, and compassion. And they don't want to, they think that we are dealing harshly and unkindly with people whose lifestyle behaviors differ from our own. So we've seen that, that, un, that drift away from the church and uh, away from this idea of the needing to follow God's truth in our lives. As our pastor said, condemning to people to hell, however, is not compassionate. And what we really need is this balance between truth and compassion, okay? Now, having said that, that's my bone to pick with you guys. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, look at the scripture from two weeks ago, because these are very, uh, very close. This one from Colossians. And particularly note that first statement up there, because I want to come back to that but very, very much the same message as tonight's message. Next slide, please. And then this is our passage for to, tonight um, that, that we're dealing with. And notice the same kind, the same general thought that we're dealing with in here. And my question is this, does any of the behavior that we're up, that we're talking about here sound like a suggestion to you? It doesn't to me. Those look like commands. And I've wondered, or as I was thinking about this, I was wondering why these things really are commands. And I think it goes back to that, to that last slide when we talked about it for really two reasons. One, God has chosen us to be his holy people. And he expects us to become conformed to the image of his son. And then the second reason um, it, it, it is very much like that. Um, and that is the way that these characteristics that we're looking here, that's how God has dealt with us. That is how God has treated us sinners. And he expects us then to treat our brothers and sisters in the same way that he's treated us, okay? So I do think that those are, back up one, uh, I, I do think those are the reasons that these instructions that we're seeing here in Ephesians and Colossians really are much, much more like commands, okay? Well, that's just fine, okay? But what about the personality he gave me, this thing that we started out talking about? You know, remember, there ain't a compassionate bone in my body. You know, how am I going to obey these commands if I'm just not built that way? Well, it's obvious I can't do it on my own. Uh, when self is on the throne of my life, I see the world out of those dark blue eyes that I talked about before. And I judge people harshly. Um, I will always opt to emphasize truth over compassion. And I get that balance wrong when I do that. But to the extent that I'm able to put Christ on the throne of my life, I can look through his eyes. <clears throat> and um, I've actually seen this working in a couple of really vital areas. The first is in my marriage to this person with whom I am so incompatible. When we approach each other with ourselves on the throne and our egos involved and our natural personalities involved, it always ends in anger and blow ups and ill will and destruction in our marriage. On the other hand, when we look at each other and see each other the way Christ sees each of us, then we can approach each other in a very different way that brings us together and leads to this idea of compassion. 
I have also experienced this in um, some ministry stuff. Uh, we've had the pleasure, privilege of going to Kenya three times on short-term mission trips. My last time, I was put on the witnessing team uh, for our trip to Nairobi, Kenya. And my job was to walk the hot, dirty streets of Nairobi in the slums of Nairobi, engaging people and asking them how their relationship with Christ was. Now, I defy anybody in here to pick an environment that is least compatible with a blue, with a guy like me, okay? And it was so obvious that I was unable to do that in any way, shape, or form that I absolutely had to depend on the power of the Holy Spirit to be able to do that. And so I spent hours upon hours walking through the streets, engaging people, not in my power, but in the power of the Holy Spirit. And the thing that I found was at the end of that time, I had a great joy in my heart, a, a great peace and joy. And I don't feel that when I'm here at home and, and you know, what I need to do and, and me is back on the throne of my life. It's just not the same. So I know that that works. Um, remember this passage from uh, Matthew 9, 36. <clears throat> Next one, come on. Yeah, there we go. Um, and it, talking about Jesus, you know, when he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were confused and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. I recently encountered, next slide, Lynn, I recently encountered uh, this description of compassion. I hope that's big enough for you to read. That came from uh, one of my devotionals by Henry Nowen. Look, look at the parts of that. Compassion asks us to go where it hurts, to enter into places of pain, to share in brokenness, fear, confusion, and anguish. Compassion challenges us to cry out with those in misery, to mourn with those who are lonely, to weep with those in tears. Compassion requires us to be weak with the weak, vulnerable with the vulnerable, powerless, with the powerless. Compassion means immersion in the condition, full condition of being human. And stop and think about it. Isn't that exactly what Jesus Christ did for us when he saw, looked on us as sheep without a shepherd? He chose to leave heaven and come down here and to live life like one of us and to experience all of the things that are in here. And did he do that because God didn't know how we felt when we feel, experience all our trials and tribulations? Heck no, that can't be it because God knows everything. He knows how he, we feel. I think he did that so that we would know that God knows because we saw him living the story, the life that's described in the gospel. So we know he's been through all of that. So in becoming conformed to the image, we're called to live our lives as he lived, to see misery with his eyes, to hear pain with his ears, to touch brokenness with his hands, and to reach out to the powerless we are immerse ourselves in the condition of being fully human. And what I know, because I've experienced it in my life, is I can't do any of that in my own strength. It doesn't work. But as I allow him to live his life with me, through me, in me, as me, I can clothe myself in the traits of compassion that we've been talking about. I pray as we conclude this, I pray that we may all bask in the power of the Holy Spirit to transform our lives and live with compassion in every arena Jesus calls us as his disciples.
this day and in all the days to come. Well, thank you for your patience and kind attention. Uh, we're going to take an offering now. Um, I would, uh, we will uh, accept any tokens of gratitude you care to make as an offering. No there's no obligation to give, but whatever you can spare helps Recovering Love Church to reach out with compassion through our ministries. Tim will serenade us during this time, and Wendy will help us with a collection. Thank you so much. Thanks, Jim. You know, I was just going to do something instrumental during this time, but your message touched me. I thought about a song. I think that fits well with uh, forgiveness and compassion and uh, Christ's amazing love for us. So I'm forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted, you were condemned, I'm alive and well, your spirit is within me, because you died and rose again, amazing love, how can it be? You, my King, would die for me. Amazing love, I know it's true. And it's my joy to honor you. Thanks, Tim. I'm glad you were inspired. Oh, he's got the whole world in his hand. Oh. We are now entering into a time for those who would like to respond to the message by offering a prayer or scripture. This is a beautiful way for us to lift our hearts in prayer or offer a fitting scripture as a way to support today's message. For those of you here in person who would like to pray or offer a scripture, remain in your seat, raise your hand, and we will bring you a wireless mic. For those of you live streaming, you can pray silently or via chat. I will conclude our time in prayer and share a prayer of my own and then invite us all to say the Lord's Prayer. Let us begin our time together. We have seen you here. We've seen you here. That's the thrill for me, and that is that you show up visibly. We can feel it. Thank you, God, for covering all the people that you weren't, that you knew weren't going to be here, that we thought were going to be here. <laughs> the things that happened that you filled and we saw that in real life. 
Thank you, God, for this church, that we get a chance to be together as part of the community, part of each other, and see you and feel you. Thank you. Dear God, so many, I think all of us pretty much want to be compassionate people. Um, I'm just going to assume that. But pain has caused us to move away from the feeling in our heart. And so speaking from experience, the pain that I've learned how to hold has just gotten so intense. And I want to feel you in my heart again. So please help me moment by moment be present with you. Please help me understand and pause when I have these feelings that aren't of you, that are not compassionate, that are learned painful responses so that I can see you and, and hear you and feel you in my heart and then be the compassionate child of God that I am, that I was born to be. It takes awareness to practice these principles. We all want them deep down, but the pain has been so strong that it, it distracts us. And we just, we need your help to be more present, to be able to understand and be aware of what's separating us from you. And then we need you to help us pull back into your love. So please help me and all my sisters and brothers be aware of the pain that's separating us and then call you to help our hearts heal. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your prayers, said in silence or spoken. Dear Lord, thank you very much for this time, these people. Thank you for Jim, Scott, the tech team, the music from Tim and Paul. Dear Lord, help me and us to be loving and tolerant, to really feel that everybody is doing the best they can with what they've got. Help us to empathize for those who are hurting. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I'll say the Lord's Prayer now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thanks, Paul. And we also have another Paul up here helping with the bass guitar. So thank you, Paul. Yeah. <laughs> Why don't we stand for our closing song, please? Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God. Born of His Spirit, washed in His blood. 
This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight. Visions of rapture now burst on my side. Angels descending bring from above. Echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, all is at rest. I and my Savior am happy and blessed. Watching and waiting, looking above. Filled with His goodness, lost in His love. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. Let's close our time together this evening, then uh, reciting our prayer for compassion, and then I'll emphasize our portable practice, and we'll uh, use our uh, blessing at the end, um, and that'll conclude our time. So would you join me in uh, this prayer? O oh, gracious God, enlarge my heart with memories of ways you have shown love, mercy, and compassion towards me. Open and soften my heart as I recall those I have harmed and seek to heal what I have broken in our relationship. Make me aware of how much you love those I have harmed. Help me to do your will in all ways I relate to others. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. And I'd like to um, emphasize then our portable practice. And I think Scott laid that out so well for us. The idea of putting that hand on the heart. And then I would suggest asking while it's there. Who's residing most heavily in that heart? Is it you or is it our Lord Jesus operating through the Holy Spirit? And look at then interacting with our brothers and sisters wherever we may go with these traits of compassion. So each morning, pray with your hand on your heart. Invite God to instill kindness, tenderness, and forgiveness. And now our closing blessing, we are powerless over the fact that God loves us and God's love for us is unmanageable. Now, uh, Mrs. McAleese, would you like to say a word about what you have planned, which I know nothing about? It's Jim's birthday today. And so we're going to celebrate um, those of you at home, thank you for thinking of him. And um, so we've got some cake for you today. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you.